Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography. Thanks for watching. I'm Ted Forbes. Today we're going to take a little bit of a break from our normal routine of having just kind of a standard lesson-oriented how-to podcast. And what I want to do is address some viewer questions that I've gotten on Flickr and in the email. And uh, just a couple things here. If you haven't joined us on Flickr, uh, please do so. You have to have a Flickr account to join the group, but it is free. And the address is flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. And it's been a really kind of a cool place where people can kind of come in, ask me questions, uh, uh, people who are more advanced can help people who are a little more beginner and uh, you can help me shape the direction this podcast is going to go in. We've done a lot of covering of basic concepts because I want to have things people can refer to when we go back uh, or actually when we go forward uh, so I can cover a more advanced topic and somebody who's maybe a more of a beginner uh, in terms of their their years in photography uh, can refer back to earlier episodes things like that so but I do need uh, to kind of know what you guys want to see because I want this to be something that's useful to you uh, but anyway I want to read some questions that people have had and most of these questions I'm going to say now uh, they kind of would require an episode at least of their own just to answer uh, but maybe I can kind of go through these and kind of give you some stuff you can work on for now or places you can go look uh, for instance we have Minolta photos says I would like to learn more about how to stage my subjects better posing and so forth uh, we also have DD dub aka real Shaka Zulu says that they would like to see segments on the most common photographic mistakes and uh, we also have Mike Stewart who says he would like to echo a previous member's comment regarding your rule of thirds episode. Topics like this are extremely helpful and would love to see more podcasts where you discuss how you compose your photographs when you're out shooting, etc. Uh, well, we are going to do a lot more of those because that's one of the things for me I feel like is really awesome about photography. It's, uh, it's not the equipment so much, but it's, it's developing your eye and learning how to shoot and learning how to... The equipment is not an equation. You can make great photos on very uh, basic pieces of equipment. So we are going to cover a lot of those things, and they'll each require kind of their own episode, and we're working on filming those right now. But if you're interested in something in the interim, uh, I will tell you this, that photography is a pretty young medium. And by that, I mean it's only about 100 or so years, 100, 150 years old. And uh, it really, visual composition is visual composition. And so I think as photographers, we tend to get caught up in talking about equipment a lot because we do have a lot of gadgets we have to deal with. And a lot of beginning photographers especially get really caught up in that and they don't see beyond that. And that's what separates the difference between uh, somebody like Edward Stecken and somebody who's just starting out is that, you know, you're talking about a photographer who spent his career developing an eye and a skill and a talent level. And uh, so I really like to talk about those kinds of things. And if you're looking for a place to start, I will say that I would go look at uh, books on painting, uh, composition, kind of techniques, things like that, uh, even sculpture, architecture, or even graphic design. And Because like I said, form, function, and visual works are just that. And it doesn't matter what medium you're shooting on. Sure, they're technical specifications. So like if you're a painter, uh, there's a difference between working with oil paint and working with uh, you know watercolor, for example. And photography is way different than that. But all those things visually, all those kind of concepts and rules apply. And we're going to get into some more, I promise, in the next couple episodes we're going to talk about contrast we're going to talk about use of negative space we're going to talk about uh, you can look at even grid layout things like that we talked about rule of thirds but anyway there's a lot of things like this that um, you know visually will help your composition uh, and your talent level as a photographer so thanks for the questions we're gonna we're gonna keep plowing on that definitely um, Artelis says I work with 35 millimeter and digital I'm going to be learning how to use my 4x5 or a 4x5 in the coming months I would really like to hear your take on darkroom techniques versus an editing software like Photoshop Shop. Well, Artel is, she's about to switch over to 4x5, which is awesome. And I don't think one is better than the other, certainly, and I don't think you were asking me that, but uh, they're two totally different worlds. And even when I do shoot film, I shoot kind of a hybrid technique where I will go shoot film and then I will bring those into the computer via the scanner and manipulate the images that way. And then I also have uh, images that, that begin as film and then they stay in the darkroom and paper. And those images, because it's so more time consuming to deal with the darkroom, uh, they tend to be my better shots, I feel, and things I really want to work with. But I got to tell you this, I love doing manual photography and getting in the darkroom and dealing with paper and chemicals and all these things. And the reason I love it is because it gets me off the computer, it gets me away from clients, it gets me away from everything, and it's this real zen practice practice where you're able to go in in this dark room and listen to music and really concentrate on your image and, and how you're making that look the best it can possibly look. Uh, and it, it's, it's, 
it's not that it's more difficult, but it's more labor intensive than something like just scanning in and going to Photoshop or even shooting on a digital camera and going to Photoshop or manipulating in Lightroom, Aperture, any of those things. It's just two different ways of working. Uh, those, the computer methods are definitely faster and they're designed to be. That's why they're more popular and that's why they've kind of come around in technology. But I really embrace both mediums. And I also feel that if you look at, you know, a hundred plus years of photography, uh, you know, there's a real, uh, kind of lineage that comes up through that and I like to feel connected to that not that I shoot as well as some of the past masters did but uh, I definitely like to embody a lot of that process in my own work so anyway good question um, hope that was what you were you were asking there uh, we also have let's see um, the question on the best compacts versus entry-level DSLRs workflow uh, I'm going to be real honest with you right now. That's not something I'm going to cover much in this podcast because I feel like there's so many resources out there as far as reading camera reviews, lens reviews, things like that. Uh, and the other thing is like equipment comes out at a much faster rate than I can keep up with it uh, and certainly review it or try to review it or, um, you know, and cover that in this podcast. So I'm really not going to concentrate on that. Plus, I firmly believe that even the cheapest of, of equipment that comes out today is still good enough to get great photos on. Uh, that really isn't ever an issue. Um, you know, you can, if you have the budget for it, can get really anal retentive about what your line resolution is and what the contrast in your lenses look like. And, and that's fine, but it doesn't make you a better photographer. Um, it's fun to work with. It might give you some resolution things that you might, if you're a pro, you can deal with uh, or justify working with clients. But what we're here to do in this is talk about what techniques you can use to make you better at what you do. Uh, so anyway, um, also the workflow, we will be going through that. Like I just kind of briefly overviewed some dark room and, and digital workflows and I, I promise I will go deeper into those in the future. And then finally we have Jason SKU and John B2009 are both asking about black and white film photography, 120, stuff like that. And you guys are in luck because right now we're working on some dark room episodes. Um, they've taken a little longer to get together than I thought they would um, just because visually how I want to do things. It's hard to shoot in the dark. Um, and so how do I represent that for you guys and how do I teach that in a podcast podcast based format and uh, we are going to be doing that and we're going to be doing kind of bathroom style photography or you know uh, in the black and white world so this is stuff you guys can do at home if you're so interested so anyway a couple questions we've gotten on the Flickr group keep them coming if you guys uh, if you haven't joined the group please do so also I want to say uh, just a thank you to everybody who's watching this um, I launched this podcast probably I guess it was mid-October and it was in planning for a couple months before that and honestly I didn't know that anybody would have any interested in watching this kind of thing and I'm really overwhelmed when I look at the statistics of how many people are downloading when we look at how many people have joined the Flickr group all those things and so for that I want to say thank you and thank you for watching uh, anyway like I said keep the questions coming uh, if you don't subscribe through iTunes um, you can certainly do that you go in your iTunes browser you just go to the iTunes store and do a search for the art of photography it comes right up and if you like what you see leave me a comment in there and uh, anyway that's it for this week thanks for watching